you guys. So this morning I did my typical get moving workout. I'm gonna wash my face. I'm down to like the last third of this cleanser. It's lasted a long time. I've been using it every morning. That's about how much I use. Actually, that's a very generous squeeze right there. Just put a little urea moisturizer on. I got some questions recently about can you use urea with tretinoin? Yeah, you can. It's naturally present on your skin. As long as it's not irritating, it should be fine. Now you may find that with topical retinoids, your skin burns and stings more easily. With urea, it can burn a little bit more, but otherwise it's fine. Of course, I put it on while the skin is still a little damp. It's the best time to apply moisturizers. All right, now that is absorbed fully. I'm gonna put on this Eucerin sunscreen. This is the Eucerin oil absorbing sunscreen lotion for face with minerals. It's a chemical sunscreen. It's kind of confusing how they say oil absorbing minerals. They're talking about the silica. I've been really happy with this. I prefer the age defense one, but it doesn't burn or sting around the eyes whatsoever. Pretty affordable price. This one is just ever so slightly a bit more matte shiny. All right, so it's a new month and it's a great time to start a new habit. I'm all about having little habits. I mentioned this recently, but I've gotten into the habit at nighttime of doing like a little bit of cleanup and it's really been helping me out. And I've also gotten in the habit of after I get out of the shower, no more phone time. I don't allow myself to get on my phone at all. And I think that's really been helping me. This is a new month. I just got a new order of my Athletic Greens to fill up my canister. Today's video is sponsored by AG1 Athletic Greens. I've been taking this for a while now, like well over a year. It's just part of my morning routine, actually. It is a comprehensive all-in-one like multivitamin drink. It has 75 vitamins and minerals, and it's also got uh, prebiotics and probiotics. You know, I follow a vegan diet, so I need to take a B12. This has that in it. I also get zinc from this, which is helpful for me. And yeah, it tastes delicious. That's the other reason why I like it. It just streamlines everything. I don't have to have a bunch of different pills, supplements. I like having an all-in-one. And I've tried other green powders in the past, and they always are like bitter. This one has a nice vanilla taste with like kind of a wave of pineapple undertone, really good. Plus, uh, AG1, the quality is unprecedented. It's first of all, it's NSF certified for sport, which is really important to me when I'm choosing a supplement. It basically just tells you that what's on the label is actually what's in the product. Um, because it's like the standard that professional athletes have to adhere to in terms of their supplements. And it's made in a TGA registered facility. I just store it in this canister in the refrigerator for maximum freshness. But you know, it's a supplement. So if you're interested in trying this out, definitely talk to your healthcare provider before choosing, you know, just to decide if you're gonna have a supplement or not. But a lot of you guys have tried this out after my recommendation and I keep getting comments how much you like it, which I am glad because I know, you know, I have, <laughs> I have an odd taste bud profile. So I'm glad to hear that you guys like it as much as I do. But the biggest difference I've noticed since consuming it is just improvement in energy. And I've heard that from you guys too. That's what it looks like. It's gluten-free, paleo-free, paleo-free, paleo-friendly, keto-friendly, dairy-free, vegan, obviously, because I consume it. There's no nuts. There's no sugar added. All right, this is a little tip. When it comes to anything like protein powders or something like this, where you have a scooper, I always put it in this way instead of the scoop down. I just find that it's easier to retrieve that way. And that way when you pull it out, it doesn't like get all over the place. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I put the scoop in with the actual scoop up. Yeah, it dissolves like in seconds in water. It's not chalky or anything. I can't stand that if you try like a powder or something. I've tried a lot of these in the past. And it's not so bad in the beginning, but then when you get down to the bottom, there's all the stuff that's undissolved and you're like, oh, that's not how this is. It's really smooth and stays, it stays suspended, you know, mixed up. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah, it's just part of my morning routine. It's also a good option if you're somebody who hates like fruits and vegetables. I don't, I love those, but uh, you know, this is a good way to kind of bridge that gap if you're somebody who just 
Maybe you struggle to get in fruits and vegetables, you're like really busy or you travel a lot. Speaking of travel, they make travel size packets too that you can just throw in your bag really handy. All right, it's a new month and AG1 was nice enough to reactivate my link. So if you have been wanting to try out AG1, click the link in my description box because you'll get a free gift. You'll get five free travel packets plus their vitamin D3 plus K2 dropper bottle. This is a year's worth of vitamin D in this bottle with your first order. So yeah, click the link if you wanna check it out and you get a free gift. Well, hey guys, I just finished filming a video for you all and I think it's such a nice day. I am gonna go run some errands. I may stop over at Whole Foods and then I think I'm gonna to go to the park and walk around because it's a really nice day. We've been having a lot of like super gray days. I've got my bay leaf shirt on with the hand sleeves. It's a UPF 50. I get these on Amazon. I've been pretty happy with everything belief. I always wanna call it bay leaf. I don't know why. But I've had this for a while now, at least several months. I have several of their like pullovers and jackets. They're really comfortable. So yeah, this one, I like the color. <laughs> pocket for your phone and another pocket maybe for like a charger and then a little slip uh, pocket for your pen and then you can put stuff here in these front pouches too thing on the, on the back i'm not sure what that's for oh i guess to like put over your suitcase handle that makes sense cool all right i mentioned last weekend how i've been doing this thing where i like to do a little 20 minute clean each night so that I stay on top of my cleaning. That's my laundry in the background. But I just vacuumed in here, cleaned my sink with the Dawn Power Washer, and I wiped down the countertops. And now I'm gonna steam mop my floor with my Shark Steam Mop. This is a pandemic impulse purchase that has not led me astray. You just put distilled water in it, it works quite well. And it gets activated just by pushing it. It's got like a little function there. Now, I don't know how it is that my floor gets so messy. I, and I like to think of myself as pretty tidy. Like I'm not someone who makes a huge mess when I cook. But yeah, this floor gets messy. So yeah, I have this shark mop and I also have a shark vacuum cleaner. I highly recommend shark products. I've always had their <coughs> vacuum cleaners and I'm really happy with the quality of them. And this little steam mop I love, but I need to get like a command hook or something to hang it up with because it doesn't stay upright when you're not holding this, which is kind of annoying. I mean, it's like a little minor thing. Whew. Hey guys, I just got out of the shower. I got my little alien t-shirt on. This is another one of those shirts. I mentioned this last weekend, but I don't know even where this came from. I think it came from like a clearance rack, but it matured so well where it's like, I don't know, soft, not rough, breathable. It's just the bee's knees. I'm not really into aliens. I don't know. Are you? Comment below. Are you into like alien shows? <laughs> um, Stephen King, doesn't he write about aliens sometimes? Is that man? He has an imagination. If you read Stephen King, what is your favorite Stephen King book? I, for me, it's gotta be The Shining because I remember specifically reading that in high school, I wanna say, and man, it got in my head, like to a point where 
I couldn't stop thinking about it and I was always like feeling a little on edge. That book really psyched me out so much so that a few years ago I actually bought the book It and planned to read it, It, and I couldn't do it. Yeah, knowing how anxious reading The Shining got me, I don't think I could stand It. And I usually, like supernatural things, they don't usually scare me at all. Yeah, real life people scare me a lot more. And by real life people, I mean, you know, criminals that are up to no good. But yeah, Stephen King, man, he can write. And the other one that's so good is Dolores Claiborne, Doggy was facing due north. <laughs> I love that scene in that movie. Man, Kathy Bates really played that role well. Yeah, I think that's one of my favorite Stephen King movies for sure is that one. And oh, man, what is going on with my hair? <laughs> Speaking of hair, I'm still really enjoying that um, Kamita's anti-dandruff shampoo. I've been alternating that with Function of Beauty. I recently just finished up actually a bunch of those shampoos that I fell in love with last year. The Garnier Fructis Pure Clean Reset one. The charcoal one especially, I have really enjoyed. So I don't know. I'm contemplating though trying out Davines. Is it Davines or Divines? Davines? I see a lot of people talking about the shampoo, but let me know in the comments if you've tried Davines, Davines. I'm kind of tempted to try that out next. I go, like the fact that I've stuck with Function of Beauty this many years is really saying something because I always like change out my shampoos a lot, but I keep going back to that one. But I do like to try out different ones here and there. So, so far I'm loving the, that Kamita's dandruff shampoo. That one is not drying. It doesn't leave my hair like brittle or whatever. I do use conditioner, but it's much gentler on the strands in comparison to other anti-dandruff shampoos. Um, speaking of dandruff, y'all, if you deal with dandruff on the face, seborrheic dermatitis, those red patches, um, I mentioned recently in a video how I thought urea, I, I recommend urea as a good moisturizing ingredient for that condition because it's anti-inflammatory and it helps kind of break up some of the scaly stuff. But another good ingredient is to use, of course, zinc pyrithione on the face. And Vanny Cream has that Z-Bar that is the best. <laughs> it's not drying, it's moisturizing. Yeah, it's a great facial soap. So I'm making my way through my CeraVe moisturizing cream. And I had this thought recently as I was using this. I think something on TikTok made me think about this. You know, from the perspective of from the perspective of topical drug delivery, there's this adage that cream is more like less drying than lotion. And that really often does add up when it comes to topical pharmac uh, pharmacologics, like for example, topical steroids or any kind of topical medication. In a lotion vehicle, lotions tend to be a lot more dry. And that is why like when you're considering um, what you're going to write as a prescription, choosing a lotion versus a cream vehicle. Lotion, it'd be a better choice in like a hair bearing area, it's less greasy. Or if you have something that is exudative, like, you know, poison ivy, you want a lotion, it actually tends to be more on the drying side. It has, the, the water content is much greater in lotion vehicles, and that can have an evaporative cooling effect that's actually soothing. But when it comes to moisturizers over the counter, that goes out the window. Um, you know, the, the adage that cream is more moisturizing than lotion. It just doesn't hold up. And there are actually, you know, some papers showing that lotions can be just as moisturizing, just as good, equally as good, if not sometimes better, depending on the formulation as creams in terms of reducing transepidermal water loss. So, you know, I've been using CeraVe moisturizing cream for so long, but if you put blind, a blindfold on me, I would say it's, you know, more the consistency of a lotion, it's pretty, it's pretty lightweight. Whereas Eucerin makes a cream that is really, really, you know, more occlusive and, you know, a, a tougher spread, if you will, and really is more greasy. And, but then I come across things that are labeled lotions and they, you know, they feel more like creams. It has to do with, you know, the thickening agents, 
and it really, you know, the emulsifiers, all of that stuff. And at the end of the day, it doesn't always add up that a cream is more moisturizing or better at addressing dry skin than a lotion. And I think that really speaks to how far moisturizers and moisturizing technology has come um, for delivering things like ceramides. Um, you know, I really think that that makes a difference. Like this product, for example, the daily body and face lotion. I mean, this is not more watery than this, which calls itself a cream. I mean, like if anything, the CeraVe one is a touch thinner. And, at, you know, both of them have ceramides, both of them are moisturizing, both of them get the job done. But if you tell a consumer or patient, hey, buy a cream, it's gonna be better at treating your dry skin, they're gonna skip past this and at the end of the day, I mean, you really would be hard pressed to say that this is drying. No way is this drying. This isn't drying in the sense of a lotion. Anyways, that's a bit of a tangent, but you know, I, I should make a video sometime. Things that they taught us in residency that didn't turn out to be true. Um, because some stuff just gets passed down. And this goes for all medical specialties, not just dermatology. But there are certain things in medicine that just get passed down because there's this hierarchy this top-down way where you just don't question things. And for me personally, you know, I went through an MD PhD training program and for, you know, I, I, I did my first half of medical school and then I went into graduate school in a PhD program and there you're like constantly challenging people, questioning people. And I love that, I really thrived. But then after I finished my PhD, I re-entered medical school and it was this very top-down hierarchy kind of thing where you just don't question things even if they seem wrong. And for that reason, I think a lot of stuff just gets perpetuated over and over again. Sometimes people don't have the time or bother to look stuff up. I had a surgeon tell me one time, trust no one, and that sounds really malignant, but I swear it was, it, it was great advice because if you rely on other people to always tell you things and you never seek out the truth yourself, I know that sounds very, you know, <laughs> woo woo, but if you never seek out and, and uh, you know, look for the evidence to support what they're saying, you, you know, you'll just end up re you know, repeating the same mistakes. It's challenging though to challenge somebody who is in a position of authority. Um, so that, in my opinion, is why a lot of things get passed down. Uh, all that to say, <laughs> trust no one. That was great advice. You don't just rely on what people have told you. You always have to go back and check on things to make sure that stuff is stuff is the way that it needs to be. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Don't forget to check out AG1. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.